The main pavilion of the Université de Montréal, the Roger Gaudry Pavilion, designed by Ernest Cormier, is easily one of the most recognizable buildings in the city. Its history, location, architect's vision, style, and architectural structure express the importance of French language higher education in the much more modern Montreal in the 1920s. The university is also a symbol of the evolution of the province in the first half of the 20th century. To start off, we are going to talk a bit about the history of the building. So the main pavilion, also called the Roger Gaudry building, was built from 1923 to 1931, then from 1941 to 1943. The Great Depression, which occurred during the 1930s, greatly affected the economic situation of Montreal. Many people lost their jobs and were dependent on government aid. Therefore, from 1931 to 1941, the construction of the new Université de Montréal halted. It was only until 1941 that the construction on Mount Royal resumed due to the provincial government's financial support. It was called the Main Pavilion until 2003, when it was renamed the Roger Gaudry Pavilion in honor of the university's first lay rector. The Université de Montréal first began as a Catholic university, and positions such as rector, chancellor, and vice-rector were all occupied by religious figures. It was first opened as a branch of the Université de Laval, and only gained full independence in the 1920s with the efforts of Montreal's bishop, Ignace Bourget. Soon, the administrators and teachers became increasingly dissatisfied with the limited space in a previous location of the university on Rue Saint-Denis. It was later destroyed by two major fires in 1922, which caused a pressing need for a new building. The clients, being the administrators of the university, saw an opportunity to reform higher education and reinforce the importance of French education in Montreal with a new and modern French language university. The 1920s was a time when French nationalism was becoming more and more popular. The French Canadians of Montreal wanted to play a more important role in the political and economic life of the city. The English already had McGill University and the French wanted their own. During the 1920s, education was still mainly managed by the church. It was only after the Quiet Revolution in the 1960s that education was reformed. The French Canadians in Quebec had a considerably lower literacy rate compared to the average Canadian. In addition, French Canadians were also generally less wealthy than the Anglophones. The Université de Montréal being the first for French Canadians and having their own independence from the Catholic Church was the first step towards a more educated and literate French population. Mount Royal was chosen for the new building to provide a quiet environment for students, which was away from the busy city. It is calmer than the city, the air is cleaner, and it was believed that the more natural site would benefit the students. The location was chosen because the top of the hill conveys power and prestige. It was also selected to increase the visibility, legitimacy, and importance of the university. Standing tall on the northern side of the mountain, the central tower of the Roger Gaudry Pavilion is indeed visible from miles and miles away. The architect of the main pavilion is Ernest Cormier a Canadian architect whose works marked Montreal's architectural landscape. He was born in 1885 and died in 1980. Cormier was educated at the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris, and its education is reflected in the building. He was also educated at the École Polytechnique de Montréal, and his background in engineering is reflected in parts of the building as well. Now, for the style of the building. The client wanted the Gothic Revival style, but Cormier did not follow through with the client's desire. This can be explained by Cormier's desire to establish a completely new identity for the French intellectual society. The Gothic style was not new nor modern anymore as the Sulpicians introduced it almost a century ago. Indeed, Gothic was used by many churches and cathedrals in the United States and Cormier did not want the new university to be associated with them. Cormier therefore had to innovate and come up with something new to represent the modern French intellectuals. Art Deco is an architectural style 
that represented a new way of showing sophistication and wealth. It originated in France in the early 1920s and quickly made its way to North American architects such as Cormier, who were trained at the École des Beaux-Arts. The style was meant to be elegant without using traditional elements. Geometry and clean lines were an important part of the style. The geometric shapes were boldly outlined and the lines were precise. Expensive materials were often used, for example, marble, yellow brick, and granite, all of which are expensive, were used for the construction of the Université de Montréal. Ernest Cormier chose to build the main pavilion in Art Deco style to project an image of modernity representing the French intellectual society. The modern architectural style that Cormier brought to Montreal was the first of its kind and influenced subsequent architecture. He decided to create a modern building to suggest a rupture with tradition and wanted to symbolize the secular, in other words, non-religious higher education in Quebec. In fact, Cormier did not place a chapel in the center of the pavilion, but rather a tower conveying the university's desire for an emphasis on education rather than religion. The tower symbolizes education since the top of the tower was used as an astronomy observatory and the tower itself was used to store books from the library. Cormier demonstrated his understanding of the hierarchical prioritization of these spaces by placing the tower the most important part in the middle of the building. By looking at the pavilion, we notice that both east and west vertical wings have the addition of pyramidal structures on each side, which is another Art Deco element. These pyramidal structures are the auditorium on the east side and the chapel on the west side. When comparing the roofs of the chapel and of the auditorium, we notice a difference. The roof of the chapel is a double sloped roof and has a bell tower in the form of a steeple. The auditorium, on the other hand, is visibly smaller and has a zigzag element to it. Also, there is a difference between the front ends of the three right wings and those of the three left wings. If we look carefully, the ones on the left have a more vertical feeling created by the vertical windows, while those on the right seem more horizontal since there are horizontal string courses separating each row of windows. Now for the details of the building. The Roger Godry Pavilion consists of three parts, the central volume being a 22-story tower. Situated symmetrically on both sides of this central piece are two projecting six-story wings, giving the pavilion an overall U-shape with ramifications. In dimensions, the pavilion is 876 feet large and 509 feet in depth, while the main courtyard itself is 271 feet in depth. The central volume of the pavilion is surmounted by a 40 feet large tower, supported at the center by eight columns and topped with a cupola. A circular courtyard located in front of the tower was meant to convey the public presence of the building. In fact, visitors of the university could stand in the courtyard and get a glimpse at the interior of the building. Moreover, very typical of institution buildings, there is a main horizontal axis to the pavilion in the middle of where the building can be split into two symmetrical sides. Each of these sides have a horizontal axis of their own, as well as two or three vertical axes. This feature of the university reflects Cormier's Beaux-Arts education, as he distributed spaces symmetrically along major and minor axes. The main material used for the construction of the pavilion is a Belden pale yellow brick, which was imported from the United States, more precisely from Dayton, Ohio. Since this material is more expensive than local brick, we can assume that the architect made this choice, intending to make the building look more valuable. The striated and gauge columns at the main entrance of the pavilion are made out of Tennessee pink marble. The large staircase is made out of gray granite decorated with some marble detailing. The courtyard was first made out of pink granite, but today it is covered by asphalt. All of the materials used give the building a sophisticated look. The building looks important and the significance of French higher education is conveyed. Having talked about the exterior of the building, it is also important to mention its interior. In fact, 
When one first sets foot in the main entrance above the large staircase, they find themselves in the Hall of Honor. In this hall, there are 20 prismatic columns placed in a circular form around the luminous cupolas on the ceiling. They are made of Levantine marble, which expresses the art deco vision of Cormier. Indeed, marble was a material commonly used in art deco. When we first entered the building through the main doors, we felt small due to the extremely high ceiling and the big empty spaces of the hall. The institution felt grandiose and we felt compelled to behave professionally. The central staircase of the hall leads to the Salle des Promotions, which is the most representative of the Art Deco style. In fact, it is very impressive with its marble columns, marble walls, and high ceilings. On each side of the Honor Hall were once two amphitheaters of 250 seats, each decorated by six NML columns. But the East Amphitheater has now, in fact since 1988, been transformed to the Rectorate's room. More examples of the Art Deco style in the building include the interiors of the amphitheaters and the Hall of Honor, which were very much in the Art Deco style with their colored marble surfaces, simple forms, and brass characteristics. All of these elements contribute in establishing the university's grandeur. During the first years, the pavilion included the Faculty of Arts, Law, and Philosophy. Then, the Faculties of Dentistry, Chemistry, and Physics were added in the east part of the building and the Faculties of Medicine, Pharmacy, and Computer Sciences in the west. The initial intention was to integrate a hospital in the main pavilion. However, it was never realized. During the Second World War, this part of the university was taken over by the Canadian Army for nuclear research. Cormier preferred unornamented and simple architecture. According to Cormier himself, proportion and not ornament or decoration determine the character of a building, and the great builders of our time have conceived of an architecture stripped of all ornament. In Cormier's opinion, even though the building took nearly 15 years to build, they did not need to modify anything with the style of the building during construction, suggesting that the simplicity of his style of architecture was modern and timeless. Furthermore, contrast was important for Cormier. He used contrast in the design of the building. The windows were more hollow to contrast against the outside wall. There was also contrast with vertical pilasters compared to the horizontal ground and roofs. Cormier placed a significant importance on the function of a building and designed the building specifically for its use, especially the intended hospital area, where the entry of the ambulance services was planned to lead directly to surgery clinics and operation rooms. Light was also an important factor for Cormier when designing the building, as the colors of the bricks chosen were based on the quantity of reflected light that it could give to the interior of the building. As well, the dimensions, placement, and height of the wings were also determined based on the amount of light. To sum up our points, the social context in which the university was built fueled the desires of French Canadians to reform French language higher education. The building's location on the Mount Royal reinforces the importance and prestige of the new university. The university projects the image of a modern French-Canadian intellectual society with a modern style that Ernest Cormier chose. Cormier himself wanted the building to have a modern look. There are modern elements as well as traditional elements in the building's architecture. The modern Arc Deco style partly represents the city's entry into a modern era. The enormous dimensions of the main pavilion and the expensive materials used reinforce the importance of the university. The impressive interior reveals the prestige and power of the building as well. In conclusion, many more pavilions were built since 1943, but the main pavilion remains the most impressive in size and in style. It is one of the most recognizable buildings in Montreal. There is now a metro station on this side, which shows the continuous and never-ending evolution of the university.